Uh, he is also in a, he is a telemetrically implanted and variously hooked up and enhanced and monitor, monitored entity. And in a fairly literal sense, literalizes the cyborg as the enhanced man for space project, as the project for constructing a co-engineered human machine system that is based on communication, command, and control. Ham, Ham is a cyborg figure in a very particular World War II and post-World War II Cold War space race configuration. The cyborg is not a figure for just any human machine moment of connection. It's not a figure for all of technology all of the time, but it's in fact a figure for a very particular historical moment. 1960 is the birth moment of the word cyborg out of a paper written for a US Air Force aviation medicine conference uh, in which a psychiatrist and a systems engineer uh, collaborate for, produce, for um, arguing the importance of physiological enhancement for man in space and the next great frontier will be space. The same um, systems engineer and um, the psychiatrist are the very ones that are used by Marge Percy in her feminist um, foundational text, Woman on the Edge of Time, written in the, the mid-1970s, that looks back to the early cyborg research and its experimental organisms in human mental patients uh, as well as the other primates. Um, and of course, the first uh, telemetrically implanted, literalized cyborg, like all of those who have gone before us in the great exploration narratives, is a rat. A telemetrically implanted rat goes first on the great ships of exploration uh, and will colonize the islands of space as the European rats colonized the Pacific to the great detriment of the indigenous flora and fauna all over the world. <laughs> uh, those of you who saw the first rat on Star Trek in Deep Space Nine will know something about the symbolism of the rodent in space narrative. Next slide, please. Okay, we need a little focus work. A 1988 version of the cyborg now I think is in the domain of the era of, ne of neoliberalism and the New World Order Incorporated. It's the world in which better things for better living come to life. The world of DuPont, where better things for better living come to life. Now, some of you have read in, in my book, Modest Witness at Second Millennium, Female Man Copyright Meets Oncomouse Trademark, and you know that this is a figure of Oncomouse, which I regard as a retelling of the allegory of the cave, mm -hmm. of moving out toward the light, out of the depths of the cave, out of the hysteria, um, that, this, that we have a kind of enlightenment figure, um, a, a techno-science post-enlightenment figure, perhaps. And again, we have a surrogate for a particular kind of figuration of what it means to be human, man, that kind of figuration again. Uh, and we have here the, uh, the convergence of the market, the university, um, and the, um, uh, the medical domain of cancer research. This is, the, this is one of the products of Richard Nixon's war on cancer. Uh, it's also one of the uh, harbingers of a future of genetically engineered entities. This, this organism is the first organism in the, in the world uh, where a major nation state's patent and trademark office patented not the process through which the organism is produced, but the organism itself. So that a, a very interesting statement is made about, um, you know, Pache Aristotle, the self-moving organism itself becomes uh, not just property, which is not new. Uh, property in living individuals is, of course, uh, old news. Um, the history of slavery alone is enough to illustrate that. One needn't go to other species for the property in, in living organisms. But the, um, the sense in which the evolutionary niche, the place of coming to species being, is the join of the market in the laboratory, um, that's what the Patent and Trademarks Office patent on the organism signals, I think. Patent and trademark law and copyright law was at the foundation of the U.S. Constitution. It's one of the uh, important documents that Thomas Jefferson paid attention to. The understanding of the attribution of ownership and authorship and what counts as property and what counts as author is understood to be at the origin of liberty uh, and the origin of what counts as a citizen. So in some sense, these mythic narratives, which are also merely mundane facts, uh, are stories about um, civic virtue. Uh, and civic existence. The cyborg stories are always stories about what counts as civic virtue. Next slide. 
Uh, this is uh, feminist artist Lynn Randolph's version of the Anko Mouse story written as the passion of Anko Mouse, and she has taken literally the sacrifice of the laboratory animal and produced here a Christ figure who is a white rat with, a white woman with breasts, white rat with crown of thorns, uh, in, a, um, in a peep show, in a kind of observation chamber, in a modern or uh, in a uh, neoliberal air pump chamber, a chamber like the air pump of the 17th century that figures the material, literary, and social technologies that establish matters of fact. She's also a figure of the barely secularized salvation narrative of barely repressed Christian techno-scientific narrative. Um, I argue that certainly in the United States, and I think much more broadly than that, techno-scientific narrative makes heavy use of Christian salvation history narr narrative materials. Um, and this particular uh, painting, um, I think, does a nice job of showing that. Uh, next slide, please. Okay. This, of course, is a personal coffee cup in which I have made it at a, a point of honor to, take, uh, to drink my coffee now for a few years because it, it feels like a kind of reminder of uh, where I am in the world. You can, of course, do the history of the world with coffee, sugar, and chocolate and get a long way. <laughs> uh, but put coffee, sugar, and chocolate in your cup, in your personal commodity, in your little Walt Disney personal commodity cup, in the kind of techno-science event culture uh, that already has marketed its personal apparatuses as well as the main feature film <laughs> from, the from the Washington University Technology Center. And we have figured on here one of the major trickster figures of North American um, uh, cultures. We have the North American uh, raven uh, figure, a uh, uh, crucial figure in myth systems all over the, the uh, North American uh, Pacific um, temperate rainforest climate areas. Um, the trickster figure figuring shape-shifting, figuring um, the, uh, the, the power of, of the trickster uh, as an intervener in the ordinary, as a disturber of the ordinary. Uh, not a particularly nice figure. The trickster is always a dangerous figure. It's a figure of risk-taking. And of course, feeding the nutrients of our trickster figure, our indigenous symbol appropriated for uh, leading-edge technology, that particular kind of constant ripoff of the local indigine for the global universal. Uh, that oxymoronic global indigine that that raven has become, uh, is eating and the proper nutrients include the um, integrated circuit microchip uh, and a double helix. The only thing missing, and I keep trying to get out my red bottle of nail polish and, and <laughs> figure it in, is a dollar sign. There's <laughs> specific nutrient <coughs> deficit in this raven's diet um, for um, persisting in the habitat areas in which this raven um, lives. Next slide, please. This comes out of a um, Swedish feminist magazine uh, and is, uh, I call it, um, the creation of Adam, uh, as of course so did Da Vinci for that matter. Uh, <laughs> but of course we have a whole series of reversals in this ectopic pregnancy that goes off screen, literally, in the top, right? We have the female Adam who is not Eve, specifically not Eve, reaching her finger to the interface with God, the computer, the keyboard, and so on and so forth. Is the figure of God the fetus, or is that the Eve that God in the in, Divin, uh, in Michelangelo's version? Excuse me, in Michelangelo's version, is that the figure of Eve that God is embracing, or is that God, or what? The one thing we know about that fetus is that its fate is not to be born. At best, it will be downloaded. That very likely she's aiming for the delete key, <laughs> or, or perhaps simply editing the file, or any number of operations which which certainly do not include birth. Um, the relationship of that fetus to that female body is highly problematic, but we know we are at some moment of touch. Um, and you can't, I truly, from this day forward, I hereby predict that you will not move a day through technoscience, that, chron that chronotope that we now live. You will not move a day through, from this day forward without seeing some uh, iconic uh, reproduction of Michelangelo's uh, touch of God with Adam. It is everywhere in contemporary techno-scientific iconography. There is a small set of images. Da Vinci's Vitruvian Man, Michelangelo's Touch, Vesalius's Anatomy, a very small collection of elements that are used again and again and again to figure, of course, art, genius, science, and me. Um, in the <laughs> remarkable arrogance 
of techno-scientific advertising.